Afghanistan's economy is in free fall, according to a UN emergency relief coordinator, with tens of millions of people facing hunger. It's been four months since the Taliban returned to power, and there's no, no effective policy from the international community over how to deal with a Taliban-led government. Owen Loy from the new hum humanitarian magazine joins me now on International Human Solidarity Day. Thanks uh, for being with us on the program. Um, Afghanistan is on its knees at the moment. How much longer is the international community going to press on with the sanctions policy, or is there an alternative uh, it can come up with? Well, I think that's the key question facing Afghanistan. You know, as, as you said, it's been more than four months since the Taliban surge, um, and there's still no real uh, answer in how, you know, foreign governments, uh, mainly Western foreign governments who formerly backed the previous regimes in Afghanistan, how they're going to deal with the Taliban-led government. And that's really having a, a direct impact on everyday lives. Uh, you know, you talked about some of the consequences. Hunger is widespread and growing. The economy and health sectors are collapsing. There are cash shortages and nearly entire population might plunge below the poverty line next year, according to, you know, a few UN estimates. I think things were dire before the Taliban surge, and that's that's key to mention. This is not just something that, that happened overnight. Um, there was a severe drought that was putting about, you know, half the population in crisis mode already. And it's pretty unclear if the Taliban had the skills to to run the country. Um, and obviously, there are, there are major fears about what life would be like what life is like um, under the Taliban, especially for women. But I think it's the, the international response to the Taliban's rise that has really pushed the country to the brink, where, to the point where aid groups are using language like world's worst and warning of famine coming in the coming months. And that's, you know, that's definitely a situation that's escalated by these, these sorts of sanctions and, and the reluctance of or inability for ag agencies to get money into the country and for Afghanistan to get its own money into the country. Um, so I think there are solutions, there are workarounds, uh, but right now I think um, there are still lots of questions and it's really come down to humanitarian aid agencies who are not really built to prop up an entire nation for, <laughs> for this level of crisis to, to kind of weather the storm for the time being. And it's kind of a vicious circle, isn't it? The more the economy collapses, the more aid it needs, and the, the more it would become dependent upon aid and the harder it is to kind of kickstart the economy. That's right. You know, I think it, it is a, this cycle. Donors, I think, have essentially shifted the job of, of propping up the country through foreign aid from these larger development budgets managed by the World Bank and others to much smaller humanitarian ones. You know, humanitarian aid is by nature short term. It's emergency based. It's not supposed to be uh, something that runs a country um, for, for, you know, months on end um, and certainly years on end. And the budgets are, are much, much smaller. So I think it's, it's the more the economy collapses, as you, as you say, it feeds into this cycle. And so aid groups built for short-term aid are kind of responding to the fallout of long-term needs. Um, and so you have this, this cycle where the, the sanctions or the, the worry about breaking sanctions um, are really adding to the problem while humanitarian needs are getting worse. 